With the arthroscope in the lateral portal, a spinal needle is used to localize the appropriate position for the accessory inframedial portal. Next, the shaver is used to remove the synovium at the level of the accessory inframedial portal in order to ease the passage of instruments into the joint, especially with the knee hyperflexed. We want to minimize the amount of soft tissue that's interposed. With the arthroscope in the central portal, we have an excellent view of the wall of the lateral femoral condyle. And using the inframedial portal as a working portal, we can debride the soft tissue off the lateral femoral condyle in order for drilling of the femoral tunnel. After the soft tissue is debrided from the lateral femoral condyle, we use a microfracture awl to pick our spot on the lateral femoral condyle, right in the central portion of the anatomic location of the anterior cruciate ligament. A pilot hole is created with the tip of the microfracture awl. Next, a beef pin is placed in the pilot hole, and at this point, the knee is hyperflexed. As the knee is hyperflexed, visibility can become somewhat difficult, thus it takes an experienced assistant to help hold the knee and to hold the camera while the pin is drilled across the lateral femoral condyle. The pin is drilled across the lateral femoral condyle until only the tip of the pin remains within the joint. At this point there is nothing across the knee so the knee can be fully extended. With the knee fully extended the flow is restored making visibility easier. The location of the tip of the pin is evaluated at this point. Once the pin is drilled out the lateral aspect of the thigh, it should be evaluated. The pin should come out in this location, not this location. With the arthroscope in the lateral portal, the very sharp reamer is reintroduced across the medial compartment with the knee in the resting position. Subsequently, the arthroscope is placed back into the central portal and the reamer is passed over the guide wire. The knee is then hyperflexed, and with the pin seated over the guide wire, the depth of the tunnel can be reamed to approximately 25 millimeters. Sometimes, upon initial reaming, the debris from the initial tunnel obscures visibility, in which case the knee should be flushed. The tunnel is drilled to a depth of 25 millimeters. Subsequently, the reamer is backed out over the pin until the pin and the reamer are no longer coupled across the knee. Once the reamer is pulled out into the notch, the guide pin can be pulled in the opposite direction. Once the pin and the reamer are uncoupled, the knee can be fully extended as there is nothing across the knee. The reamer is passed across the medial compartment, making sure not to injure the medial femoral condyle as the reamer is withdrawn. Subsequently, a shaver can be used to remove all of the bone debris. After the bone debris is removed, the tunnel can be appropriately evaluated. You can see that the tunnel has been placed in the ideal location on the lateral femoral condyle. The back wall is clearly preserved, as is the lateral wall. At this point, the tunnel is evaluated. The lateral wall is clearly intact. Thus, an endo button would be safe to use in this situation, and the tunnel has been appropriately drilled. It's very easy to evaluate with the scope and the central portal. If there's any question as to the depth of the tunnel, the reamer can be re-advanced into the tunnel now that the bone dust is no longer there, and the length of the tunnel can be perfectly evaluated. The medial femoral condylar cartilage is still pristine.